I guess I'm playing catch up today. For all you millennials that missed the good old days of the civil rights movement and the good old days of Jim Crow and racism, guess what? It's back. Many Trump judicial nominees won't affirm the Brown versus Board ruling, and that concerns some legal ex experts. The Supreme Court decision 65 years ago ruling that segregating schools by race was unconstitutional is widely viewed as settled to many Americans, but there is concern among some in the legal community that that might not exactly be the case. More than two dozen of President Trump's judicial nominees have declined to answer whether the Brown versus Board of Education was properly decided, and legal experts said that that could have real implications on education and race in the United States. The most recent example came when Wendy Vitter, who was confirmed Thursday as a federal judge in Louisiana, declined to affirm the decision. She said, I don't mean to be coy, but I think I get into a difficult, difficult area when I start commenting on Supreme Court decisions, which are correctly decided and which I may disagree with. If I start commenting on, I agree with this case or don't agree with this case, I think we get into a slippery slope. Responses like Vitter's are why the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights released a letter this week urging U.S. Senators to oppose all judicial nominees, Vitter included, who refused to state clearly that the landmark Supreme Court ruling was correctly decided. For them, the Brown decision was about much more than education. Very true. Brown versus Board of Education is what civil rights really sits on. Christine Lucius, the organization's executive vice president for policy and governmental affairs and a graduate of Georgetown Law, who has worked on legal issues in Congress for more than a decade, told The Fix. Brown versus Board was about so much more than ending legal segregation in schools. It also overturned laws that created a racial caste system to oppress and dehumanize African Americans. It opened the doors to allow for African Americans to integrate into all facets of American life. Judges who were unwilling to clearly affirm that Brown versus Board was correctly decided are putting all of this at stake, sending a dangerous signal to all Americans that Brown could someday be overturned and that our nation could return to the disgraceful days of racial segregation. All judicial nominees must endorse this essential principle of racial equality. Casting doubt on this landmark ruling is like an earthquake under equal protection jurisprudence. You gotta remember, we most of the legal rights that we have as black people sit underneath the equal protection uh, laws. Brown embodies the legal foundation on which all other desegregation decisions were based and the principle on which our federal civil rights laws were premised. Derek Johnson, president and chief executive of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, an organization that was highly involved in the fight for desegregation, said the lack of support for the ruling suggests that the nominees might not take concerns about school segregation seriously. Questioning Brown sets us on a dangerous course, he told The Fix. Brown represents values that are now ingrained in our justice system and society. At a time when our schools are still segregated and our colleges lack diversity, reaffirming our core commitment to equality is in education is imperative. Precisely when our nation is still struggling to fully comply with Brown is not when federal judges should call this mandate into question. Senator Elizabeth Warren was a Harvard law professor long before she launched her presidential campaign. She tweeted that the work of addressing systemic racism must continue beyond Brown. The resegregating of public schools has been a concern for many on the left who believe that students of color are often not receiving the same quality of education as students at predominantly white schools. After the Economic Policy Institute released a report in 2013 called For Public Schools, Segregation Sense, Education, and the Unfinished March, some legal and education experts have attempted to highlight how, in many cases, the work of Brown versus Board has been undone. 
report said. Today, many black children still attend schools in racially and economically isolated neighborhoods. While their families still reside in lonely islands of poverty, 39% of black children are from families with incomes below the poverty line, compared with 12% of white children, U.S. Census Bureau. 28% of black children live in high, high poverty neighborhoods, compared with 4% of white children. Other socioeconomic hardships that, that powerfully affect student achievement also remain unacceptable for black students. Housing for many remains inadequate. The black unemployment rate remains today as then more than twice that for whites. While the minimum wage has been extended to some occupations in which black workers predominate, its level today is below the established that established in 1967. Inflation adjusted in relation to national average wages. A discriminatory criminal justice system today incarcerates many more black young adults than it did 50 years ago. If this is going to change, some in the legal community said the country's judges will have to show an un unequivocal support for laws that make segregation based on race illegal. Beyond that, civil rights advocates that the nation's judges must display Continued support for laws that address de facto racial segregation in schools. So far, there is little confidence that either will happen under Trump. So, for all you folks that believe that integration is wrong, that desegregation was wrong, and you believe that blacks were better off before integration, I guess you're going to wish it into existence because it's coming. So now you millennials and you uh, Gen Z's get to fight for it all over again. Isn't that wonderful? So if you don't want it, guess what? You're going to get your wish. We, we're going to back to Jim Crow, boys and girls. Isn't that nice? So for all you segregationists that or black segregationists, you should get on board and get behind this and go ahead and strike down Brown versus Board. Strike down the Equal Protection Clause. Then you're going to have to move out of the white neighborhoods that you live in, in those suburbs. And go back to where? Go back to Blackistan that you hate so much. The one thing I don't like is, is you guys talk about how um, civil rights was wrong, how uh, mo not millennials, but boomers dropped the ball, civil rights generations dropped the ball, and how that's how come black folks can't come together and you guys live out in the fucking white suburbs and corporate jobs and think that these laws and, and these protections that have been de facto uh, for the last 60, 70 years that black folks work so hard to uh, get put in place or bullshit and you're better off without them. Guess what? You can go back and do it all again because now you're going to have to fight for it. Not for just you, but also your children. Because at this point, black baby boomers don't give a shit. You can fight for it or you can live with it. At this point, boomers like us, we really don't care which. We're going to see how much you like not living in a country with the Equal Protection Clause. And that's my note for today. With that, I'm going to jump off of here. I'm going to see you nice millennials later. Peace.